Hi, in this video we will be making a simple IKFK leg rig. Let's start by selecting all of the bones we need and moving them to a separate layer so they are easier to work with. We can also enable their names so it's easier to find the ones we need. And just follow along and select the ones that I'm selecting here. So all of the thigh bones, then all of the calf bones, and then all of the foot bones except the IK foot L bone because that is for runtime IK. And now with all those bones selected, press M and move them to an empty layer. And then enable the visibility of the layer you move the bones to. Next, let's make it easier to select the twist bone. First select tie twist 01L, then tie twist 01L temp, and then tie twist 02L and tie twist 02L temp. And then select the calf twist bones. Then scale them down a bit and make them a bit thicker. This has nothing to do with the functionality of these bones, I'm doing this just so it's easier to see them and to select them. Next snap the cursor to the top of the calf bone, and then snap the end of the thigh L temp to the 3D cursor. Next snap the cursor to the end of the calf bones, and then snap the foot L temp to the cursor. Next, rename thigh L temp to MCH thigh driver L. Then calf L temp to MCH calf driver L. And then rename foot L temp to MCH foot driver L. Then select all of these three bones that we just renamed and duplicate them. Make them a bit thicker and then rename the first one to FK thigh control L the second one to FK calf control L and the third one to FK foot control L. Now for the IK chain, duplicate these three bones again, rename the first one to MCH IK thigh L and the second one to MCH IK calf L and the last one to IK foot control L. I went a bit ahead and added custom shapes to the FK controls that we just made. With that, we can consider that the FK setup is finished. And for IK, we will need one more bone. So first snap the cursor to where the knee is and add one more bone. And now I'll show you a little trick that will enable us to easily move this new knee bone to be in front of the leg. With one of the thigh bones selected, switch the transforms orientation to normal and click on the plus on the side. Then select the knee again, and now we can use this normal direction to move the knee in front of the leg. This makes it very easy to correctly place IK pole targets. You can now delete this custom orientation, because we don't need it anymore. Now you can rename this bone to IK knee pole control L. Next, let's add the IK constraint. Select the IK foot control, then the MCH IK calf, and add the inverse kinematics constraint. In the constraint settings, let's add the knee to be the pole target. Then change the chain length to 2 and the pole angle to 180 degrees. You can see that we have a small error with the IK foot control and we can easily fix that by parenting it to the world control. So just enable the bone layer that contains the world control and parent the IK foot control to the world control. So I just went ahead and added some custom shapes and with that IK is done as well. Next we will make the IK FK switch. First I will hide the IK and FK bones so they are not in the way and then I will select the foot driver and the calf driver and make sure they are connected and then I will do the same with the calf driver and the thigh driver. Next let's add the constraints. First, constrain the thigh driver to the IK bone and then to the FK bone. And make sure to do it in that order. Then do the same for the calf. So first IK and then FK. 
and lastly do the same for the foot. Copy transforms to IK and then copy transforms to FK. Next we can add a parameter that will drive the IK FK switching. So select the torso control, add a new parameter and change its name to leg L IK FK and change the property value to 0.0. .0. Next right click and copy this as a new driver. Now select the thigh and paste this driver on the influence property. Then do the same for the calf and then for the foot. And this gives us a working IK FK switch. And finally, we can attach the deformation bones to the drivers. So start by making a buffer bone for thigh L and parent it to the thigh driver. Let's also give it a proper name, so buff thigh L. Then repeat the process for the calf. So duplicate, parent the duplicate to the driver, and rename it to buff calf L. And again, same for the foot, duplicate, scale it down, parent to the driver, and rename it to buff foot L. Next, we can constrain the deformation bones to their buffers. So copy transforms on the foot, then on the calf, and finally on the thigh. And let's check to see if everything is working correctly. One thing left to do is to deal with the twist bone. So let's start with the thigh twist 01 bone. Rename it to MCH thigh twist 01 driver and parent it to the pelvis control. This will make it so that it inherits the orientation from the pelvis and we will give it a damped track constraint to make sure that it always points at the knee. And now we have a nice twist distribution between the top and bottom of the thigh. And for the calf twist, let's first select the calf driver and give it two B-bone segments. Then in edit mode, set the ease in and ease out values to zero. This will make sure that the bone will always stay straight. Next, we can constrain the calf twist bone to this one. So select calf twist 01 L temp, rename it to MCH calf twist 01 driver. I will scale it up a bit more so it's easier to select. And then I will constrain it to the calf driver. Enable the follow b-bone button and set head tail to 1. And then apply this as the rest pose. Now let's select calf twist 01 L. Make it a bit longer so it's easier to select. And then duplicate it to create a buffer bone. Make sure to give this buffer a proper name. And then, as usual, we parent the buffer to the driver. And then we constrain the calf twist bone to its buffer. And now the foot twist will distribute nicely along the calf. I went ahead and cleaned up the scene the same way that I did in the previous video. And that's it. We can do one final check to see if everything is working correctly. And lastly, if you learned anything from these videos and would like to see me make more, consider subscribing and maybe supporting me on one of the platforms listed here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.